this discussion further, I'm now joined by John Curtis, prominent political scientist and currently professor of politics at the University of Strachtadal. He is also a senior research fellow at Natchkin Social Research. And Arif Sherwani is also joining in with me to take us through that chat. Uh, professor Curtis, before I... Uh, hand it over to Arib. Uh, you were the first to call the general elections of 2015. What's your call now? Keeping in mind that the markets are factoring in an edge to remain. Sorry, I didn't catch your question, but I went down. Professor Curtis, I wanted to understand from you, the markets are factoring in or pricing in a possibility of remain. What is your call now? <laughs> Well, I think the truth is the balance of the evidence is in favour of Remain, but it's only the balance of the evidence is by no means certain. We've had opinion polls published in the last 24 hours which have ranged between, on the one hand, 55% for Remain, 45% for Leave, a relatively comfortable lead for Remain, but others putting Remain as low as 49%, Leave on 51%, and anticipating that perhaps Leave might win. Uh, and in truth, most of the polls are between 49 and 52%, and to that extent at least, I don't think anybody can be certain what the outcome is going to be. But I think almost undoubtedly in part what the markets are doing are reacting to the fact that this time last week, things for the Remain side had suddenly become much uh, less optimistic. There was a clear shift in favour of Leave in the polls, some of that shift, though I don't think all of it has been reversed, and that means that perhaps in the end, Remain will just about manage to make it. Right, Professor. Uh, now, you have been politically analysing this entire situation. Uh, and coming to the political aspect of this, uh, I'm certain uh, uh, David Cameron, when he called this referendum last year, mustn't have expected it to be this close uh, uh, when the polls eventually came out. Uh, what is your reading of this? Now, we know that there is some love lost between the Conservative Party and David Cameron and uh, George Osborne on the other side. Uh, what do you think are the chances of retaining office irrespective of which way uh, the vote swings? Well, I think certainly if we do vote to leave, David Cameron will not remain as Prime Minister. I think it's also the case, irrespective of whether we vote to remain or to leave, that it is unlikely that George Osborne will remain as Chancellor of the Exchequer. Uh, the, when last week the Remain side uh, dipped in the polls, he issued a statement saying that if we voted to leave, we would have to have an emergency budget to put up taxes, and no less than 60 Conservative MPs indicated they would not be willing to vote for that budget. No Chancellor can afford to be that unpopular inside his own party. But the problem that will face David Cameron if he does remain as leader is putting his party back together again, particularly if it's only a narrow victory for uh, re Remain. Uh, first of all, a lot of those on the Leave side will, I don't think, necessarily forgive him for some of the comments that were made about his opponents during the course of the referendum. Um, and certainly, uh, when it comes to actually implementing the deal that the uh, Prime Minister uh, got in Brussels, which now has to be implemented by the European Union, if there were to be any signs of slippage on the implementation of that, you can presume that that half of the Conservative Party, which is going to vote for leave today, will be looking immediately and, cry and crying foul. So. Uh, the United Kingdom is going to be an awkward member of the European Union if it remains. The Prime Minister is going to have a difficult time with his backbenchers. And you're right. I mean, the fundamental failure of this referendum, from Mr Cameron's point of view, is that rather than being able to get most of his party on the Remain side, in the end, it's just split pretty seriously down the middle. Right, Professor. So uh, essentially, there's some love lost there between uh, David Cameron and his party. Uh, uh, what, what were you making of uh, George Osborne's... Uh, uh, comments last week that uh, in, if the voters decide to leave uh, when, uh, uh, as part of this referendum, the economic cost to the UK uh, would be close to £30 billion and as a result, uh, the government might be compelled to hike uh, taxes and uh, cut uh, healthcare spending and take other such measures to make good on that deficit. Um, what are you making of that £30 billion number? Do you think it's exaggerated? Well, the, tr the problem that the government faces is that most of the numbers that it has put forward are regarded as exaggerated by significant sections of the public. I mean, it pro probably its biggest claim made major, much earlier in the campaign was that every household would be £4,300 worse off by 2030. 
um, uh, if we voted to leave. And there was a, just a mark of incredulity out there about, well, hang on, do you really think you can forecast that accurately? What's going to be the state of the British economy in uh, 15 years' time? Now, that said, what is clear, and, and, and if Remain wins, this will be absolutely fundamental. The uh, pl plurality, at least, of the British public do think that the economy will suffer if we do vote uh, to leave today, and that is the principal motivation behind those who are voting to remain. It's certainly not going to be, a, for many people, a vote to remain out of love for the European Union, as opposed to fear of the consequences for the UK if we were to exit. But that consideration is being balanced against the principal motivation behind the Leave vote, uh, which is that a majority of people think that immigration in the UK, UK is too high and that it will be lowered if we, re if we left the European Union. The freedom of movement provisions of the European Union are essentially the crucial foundation upon which the Leave campaign is founded. The United Kingdom has experienced relatively high levels of immigration over the last 15 years, and the United, and the United Kingdom Independence Party, which in a sense has started this whole process through its relative electoral success, uh, persuading David Cameron to offer this referendum, it very successfully in recent years has linked the idea of European Union membership with the high levels of immigration, and that's the reason why the Leave vote is as high as it is. So, in the end, you know, many a voter is going to decide between, well, hang on, is the economic risk worth it, or actually, I'm so concerned about immigration, I'm going to go for Leave anyway, and we'll find out tonight which of those two considerations has proved to be the more powerful in voters' minds. Right, Professor. Now, uh, my final question to you. Uh, we know that the referendum is not legally binding. Now, uh, going by, the, uh, um, by, by that yardstick, is it possible that uh, the British uh, parliamentarians might decide, to, might decide to reject the outcome uh, based on the economic forecast? I think it would be politically impossible for uh, a parliament or government to uh, fail to implement the decision of this referendum. And certainly, if any government were to do that, it would be toast at the next UK general election. If you hold a ballot, you tell people it's decisive, you tell it's once in a generation, you tell people that um, uh, there's no way back and then renege on it, I think, frankly, you would have absolutely no political credibility at all. But you raise an important question, which is, I think the truth is, if we do vote to leave, I mean, apart from the issues for uh, the financial markets, there will also be issues is about the ability of anybody to provide the United Kingdom with stable government. We are in a situation where the Conservative Party is riven from top to toe. If we vote to uh, leave, it's, we, there are question marks about whether some Conservative MPs are no longer willing to back a government that wishes to um, exit. But at the same time, the, the Labour opposition Labour Party is also riven from top to toe um, uh, because it, uh, many of its members, and particularly its MPs, are not very keen on its leader, uh, Jeremy Corbyn. So so there is a fundamental question here, but given the state of both of our principal political parties, about what, how we would actually manage to be able to form a stable government in the wake of a Leave vote. Right, Professor Curtis, thank you so much for joining us with your views, and I hope that's brought some clarity for our viewers. And Kritika, on that note, it's back to you. So here we have it. Uh, the polls are neck to neck. The referendum is too close to call. And even as of now, it remains anybody's guess. But like we saw investors in Europe, uh, they seem to know something that we don't. And markets are just rallying. Even the currency markets, there's something that uh, the currency and the equity markets seem to know. But we don't. And we'll only know in a few hours from now.